Hello and welcome to a new episode. We are going to talk about chamfering, about using the debar tool in the path workbench and how to make your designs to be more friendly for using on the CNC. Here I have two objects, two bodies. They are actually the same thing, but one has the chamfers already created using the chamfer tool in the part design workbench. The other has simple square corners. When designing models for the CNC, I'd rather not create these chamfers using the part design workbench, but rather leave them with square corners and then use some tools in the path workbench to create the chamfers for the final object. Of course there are situations when you need to have the chamfers if you've already created them in the tree then deleting them might break the model due to the topological naming problem. So there are situations when you already have the model with the chamfers already created. So let's cover both scenarios and see how can we make these chamfers on the CNC because unfortunately the two ways of creating the model lead to two different ways of creating the chamfers. So first of all I will go with the easy way. The easy way is with a body created especially for the CNC without the chamfers but me knowing that I will create them later. So I will select the body, go to the path workbench of course, create a new job, set the origin which for now is in the origin of the document but this body is moved to the side so I will select its corner and click on set origin. Now you can see the origin is where it should be. I will add another tool. I have a 45 degrees chamfer. Let's give it some vertical and horizontal speed. A spindle speed of course. Let's go to the job, to the tools. This is the tool controller and this is the tool shape. If I make it visible you can see that it's not a 45 degrees chamfering tool. It's a 22.5 degrees because the 45 degrees in the name refers to to the angle between the two sides. So if I want 45 degrees between the vertical and one side, I will have to modify the cutting edge angle and put here 90. The tip diameter is also too large, it's 5 millimeters. I have a tool bit with a 1 millimeter tip diameter, so I will change it from here. Of course, this is not the best solution. The best solution would be go to go to the path to the tool bit library editor and create the tool bit so I can use it later. These modifications from here will only apply to this document. Now go to the job. I will select this face and select the debar tool. If I click on apply you can see that it already created some path that goes both on the inside and on the outside. I've selected this face. It will take all the edges of the face selected in the base geometry. I want a 4 millimeters chamfer here so I will adjust the values. You can see the width since it's a 45 degrees chamfer. I can simply write 4 here. The height is the height of the tool bit that will be outside of the corner because placing the tool bit exactly on the corner might leave some small pieces of material behind. I will just leave it for a half a millimeter, click on apply again, go to the cam simulator, press on play. Of course on the inside it will look a little odd because I should have created the pocket first, close the simulator and if you look closely of course the simulator creates some weird things like these lines but they won't actually be in uh, real life. The inside corners are rounded of course because of the nature of the cutter bit. So this is the easiest way to create chamfers on your models. Just leave them without any chamfers in the part design workbench or whatever workbench you're using. Just leave them with square corners then use this corners as a reference for uh, the bar operation. When selecting a face it will uh, chamfer all the edges of the face. If you select the edges it will just modify those edges. If you have a wider chamfer, let's say a 10 millimeters chamfer, you don't want one single pass. So you can go to the depth tab, change the step down to 2 millimeters for example. I will have several passes. It's just like using a hand router and lowering the cutter head for each pass. You can also change the direction from the operation tab. It's clockwise or counterclockwise. It's not conventional or climb cut. And now let's move to the second example. I will delete this job. Hide the CNC body and show the non-CNC. Let's say I already have this design and I want it milled on the CNC. First of all let's select it, create a new job, go to the tools tab, add the 45 degree chamfer tool bit again, give it speeds. Since this body was already placed in the origin, you can see at the job that the origin is correctly placed. Let's create a pocket operation, zigzag offset, press on apply. I have to go to the tools and modify this tool bit again, so ideally would be to add it using path toolbit library editor. Just create a tool bit and use it whenever you want it. I will go the same way, modify the angle to 90 degrees. It's the angle between the left and the right side of the tool bit, so 90 degrees will result in a chamfer of 45 degrees. 
change its height and millimeters and the tip diameter to one after creating the pocket i want to create this chamfers i will hide the pocket operation i don't need to see it now going the same way by selecting this face and the debar tool creates some odd results for models that already have the chamfers the debar operation simply doesn't work as it should but there has to be a way to mill these chamfers let's see i've already created the body i don't want to delete them if i have another future after chamfer everything will break the solution that i found for milling chamfers that are already created is the following i will select the bottom line of the chamfer all around and i will create a profile operation i will select the tool controller the 45 degree chamfer and click on apply you can see now that it's on the inside so i will move it on the outside click on apply again and now this looks like something that might create a chamfer but it's way too far because i have the use compensation option checked which moves the cutter head away from the part that i'm milling with a value equal to half the diameter of the tool bit i will uncheck the use compensation and now even though it's not that visible i will hide the body and you can see there is a path exactly on this line but since my cutter bit has a tooltip diameter the center of the cutter bit would move along that line which will result in a bigger chamfer that i want to so i want to move the tool bit farther away from the material with this distance which is half the tip diameter so let's go back to the profile operation go to the extra offset field and write a value of 0.5 which is half of the tip diameter it was a one millimeter tip diameter click on apply and now you can see the operation move to the outside of the body with that diameter as far as i know it's the only way you can mill some chamfers that have already been created without any errors so i will do the same for the inside i will just copy the operation in the job go to the base geometry clear it select the bottom of the inside chamfer hold the control key down of course to make a multiple selection click on the add button click on apply and let's see what the path is let's unselect this you can see that now it's on the inside of the body so it's not a good thing let's go to the operation change the cut side from outside to inside click on apply again and now i should have the chamfers correctly done take into account that creating chamfers using the profile tool needs some adaptations based on the shape of the cutter head take into account the angle of the cutter bit at the angle of the chamfer now let's also show the pocket operation and i want to go to the simulator i will first go to change the zigzag offset to simple offset because when using the simulator straight lines are much easier rendered than diagonal lines click on apply click on ok go to the pocket shape go to the data tab scroll down to keep tool down value set it to true it will prevent a lot of up and down movement so let's make sure everything works as it should let's go to the simulator first i will create the pocket then the outside profile then the inside profile the pocket will take some time now you can see that the tool bit is changed and it will create the two profiles and i'll wait for the operation to finish accepting the inside corners which such a cutter head won't be able to perfectly mill the tray as we called it according to the model it has the bevels on it so when creating a model especially for milling on the cnc i would recommend to avoid chamfering and to do it using the debar when you already have a model and you cannot use the debar tool because it will result in some weird results and calculation you can use the profile operation just make sure you uncheck the use compensation and give an extra offset equal to half of the tip diameter and this way the final result will exactly match the model thank you for watching and see you next time